So often when we have a scatter plot and we are convinced that the relationship can be modeled by a line, then we compute what's called the linear regression equation. And the calculator is going to do this, and what it what it will do is it it'll will create what's called the line of best fit, or the least squares line. If you um, if you want the the mathematically correct term, then and again it's called the least squares line because that's how it's calculated. But for now, just think of it as the line of best fit, the line that best models the data um, the the data that you've been given. So we see here on the right that there's a we we have a line that goes through the scatter plot. Now obviously most of the points aren't even on that line. There might be a few, but most of them aren't. And that's because you know it, this line is just a model that's representing the overall trend, okay? It, it can't possibly go through all the points, but it's basically a description, you know, a visual description of of um, the relationship between the the variables. So here we have a relationship between the protein uh, protein and um, fat content um, for 30 items in, at Burger King. And generally speaking, you can see that as uh, as the protein content goes up, or as the number of grams of protein increases, the number of grams of fat does as well. So, a um, couple of couple of definitions we're going to want to get straight. Y with a hat over it would, is going to be representing our predicted value. Okay, it's the predicted response va uh, variable, or predicted value of the response variable. M, of course, is slope. X is our independent or explanatory variable. And B is our y-intercept. Okay, so the linear regression equation will always have this form. Notice I'm saying y hat because it's going to be a predicted value. The, the line, uh, the linear model represents predicted values of the response variable, not the actual ones. So it's y hat equals mx plus b. Okay, that's an important thing to get straight. Now, as we've seen, we can compute. Um, we can find the correlation coefficient, and in doing that, we also get, for free, the linear regression equation. So I'll do that again, just to show you, or to remind you where that, where those buttons are. So hopefully the data is still in your calculator. Just go, if you go to stats, over to edits, just make sure you've got these numbers in. One, one, two, three, five, six for L1, and 10, 12, 16, 19, 22 for L2. So again, I, you're gonna hit, that and then you're going to hit calculate and you're going to go down to the one that says linear regression use ax plus b you press enter again make sure l1 is your X list and then L2 is your Y list. You may have to put them as commas there, depending on your calculator. And so there, when we 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 get our equation that says Y equals AX plus B, our A is 2.349 roughly, and B is 7.82. We get something called R squared, which also has some meaning, but um, more importantly for us is the R value below, which is 0.99 as we've seen before. So you would write your linear equation as y hat equals our a is 2.349 x plus the y-intercept which is 7.814 okay so there's no um there's no meaning of this one. I These values have no meaning I just put random variable data in the in the calculator, but later we're going to see that we're going to want to be able to interpret the slope and y-intercept in terms of the context of this problem. Now, once you have a linear model, you can use it to make predictions. Okay, and so generally, 
most of the scatter most of the points are not going to be on the line which means that your line either over predicts or under predicts a y value a y value for a given x value and that dis that difference the difference between the actual data value and the predicted is what's called the residual so the residual is your actual data value minus the predicted okay so the actual data value is we we know is just y and the predicted is y hat okay so as a, an example and again you can see this in the picture over here on the right right the the actual so the actual value I'm gonna I know it's kind of um small let me zoom in here Right, so this is the actual data value, and this is the predicted, because it's on the line. Okay, so predicted minus actual. So you can see that would be a positive residual, because your predicted is bigger than your actual. Whereas, for instance, over here, your predicted is there, your actual data value is there, this time the residual would be negative because when you do um, oh actually I'm sorry I just I just reversed that um, this time your your residual would be positive because the residual is the actual minus the predicted sorry the residual would be a positive number because actual is greater than predicted whereas over here your residual would be negative you'd have a negative residual because your actual is below the predicted so that would re result in a negative a negative value okay so as just a quick example it says based on the regression line it was predicted that there would be 2245 students enrolled at FHS in 2010 when September rolled around there were actually 2187 students calculate the residual well the residual as we've seen is the actual value minus the predicted okay so if the actual value is 2187 and the predicted is 2245 then we get a ref residual of negative 58 students okay so there's our residual Now again, notice it's negative, and that makes sense because our actual value is lower than the predicted value, so you get a negative residual. So the the residual tells the sign of the residual tells you whether your model over predicted or under predicted.